Greetings and salutations, mortals and immortals, animate objects, semi-conscious gelatinous oozes, emergent AI, and everything that creepeth upon the face of wherever you may be. It's that time again, listeners. Time to pause your nefarious endeavors and incline a near-like appendage toward your speakers to hear what's the buzz in malevolent society. What's the deal with zombies' union rights? Hive mind AI and the job market got you worried about your position? And what is a budding warlord to do with all the HR complaints? Stay tuned and we'll dive right into these and other topics for the Sinister Scoop. I'm your host, Frank Muggins, and this is Diabolic Dialogue, broadcast to you on MEI Public Radio. Our top story tonight, as I'm sure you all know, has to be the birth of Universe MGL-1211 inside the pre-existing Universe MGS-3110. Universes come and go all the time in the vast chaotic nonsense that is our multiverse. Bang, swirly swirly, bits of stuff, and things coalesce. Life shows up because reasons, life does a number on itself, universe eventually ends, either due to inevitable heat death and contraction, or because someone hit the off switch accidentally. Side note, to the denizens of NSN744, I'm told that IT has been informed of the unexpected rearrangement of your space-time manifold, and you should be back to normal shortly, relative to multiversal standard time. For you, that works out to be 200 years. Back to MGL1211. Reports indicate that Salivus the Salivator, which is a terrific name if you ask me, but I'm clearly in the minority, used his company investiture to access the control box for his parent universe's natural law. His intention was to tweak gravity throughout MGS-3110 to be overall less strong. Not entirely sure why. It could have been a temporary measure to alleviate the stress of moving his rock walkers across the Kalahopi Desert. Or maybe he really wanted to dunk a basketball. Either way, he clearly did not get what he was aiming for. A detonation appeared on his planet, wiping him, it, and the surrounding solar system out in a matter of seconds. Extra universal observers did confirm its profile to match that of a Big Bang type event. The infant universe is now expanding through the entirety of MGS 3110 and is on course to wreck the lives of trillions upon trillions of organisms and a few sleeping eldritch horrors. So firstly, wow. Can we take a moment to respect the sheer colossal nature of the salivator's screw-up? Just wow. He could never even have... I mean, how would you even feel it? One second, you're a cackling sorcerer about to finish off the spell that will alter your world's gravity because reasons, and next moment, boom, baby universe in your face. I have all kinds of questions, and I know you lot have too. Would it be over instantaneously relative to Salivas? Or would he be experiencing time at a different rate, because of the new universe's own space-time manifold interfering with MGS 3110s? Ugh, that would just be awful if you had to experience yourself being obliterated in slow motion and also instantly at the same time. Whew, just thinking about that obliterates a few of my brain cells. But hey, at least I'm not making a new universe in the space of my head, right? <laughs> Moving on from my thoughts, let's see what the malevolent community has to say on the subject. Hollow thought eight 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 eight. I always forget the number of eights this gal has in her tag. I think it's eight. Anyway, Hollow thought would like to know what's going to happen to Salavas the Salivator now, since his demise came before payment could be made on his malice. Oh oh. Oh, and there's also a uh, tirade about the extinction of all life forms that could be described by the term moist. Hmm. Excellent question, Hollow Thought, tirade notwithstanding. Believe you me, Salavas may have been obliterated, but he hasn't gotten off easy. Universal IT doesn't take kindly to people doing their job for them, so they'll load a backup copy of his essence before the Supreme Court, charge him with crimes against existanity, and retroactively cause all the pain of all the death and suffering he just inflicted on his person. Once he's through that, they'll restore him again without removing the memory of what they did to him and hand him over to us. Then we get to negotiate what to do about his debt. Considering the mental space Salavas will be in then, he won't be much for talking. Odds are we'll take all his magical talent away from him for use elsewhere 
and to bind him in eternal servitude down in the koala mines. Moral of the story, death is no excuse for late payments. More questions from our listeners. Kaleidoscope Kane with a K and an AK, splendid username, wants to know what will happen to the two universes, MGL1211 and MGS3110. I honestly don't know, mate. We've had all kinds of universal glitches before, but this is the first one I can remember that involves a new one being made by mistake. They'll probably schedule a surgery and extract the baby from the mother. Where it'll go then, who's to say? It's an unintended existence, so we might feed it back into the reality generator. Or we might play with it, see what makes it tick. No claims on it, after all, so finders keepers, I say. 1331115655151 wants to know if 4452442 will lead to 666541. I can only reply with 22532 and 115532. I can't speak septal, only go up to hexal, sorry. Hope that answers your question, though. And next we had, uh, Billy Joel's left elbow wants to know something else, but we really need to let this being know how to pick a name. Random body parts of random individuals isn't the way to go. Come on, everybody, this is diabolic dialogue, not bad peasant brawling. We have some decor here. One more question on the baby boomer, as we're now calling MGL1211. Then we have more stories to cover. And I hope I'm pronouncing that as correctly as I can without a smpuntlpunt of my own, wants to know what effect the baby boomer will have on malice payment rates company wide. I'm not sure what you mean there, Henfwach, if I may call you that. The deal struck with the salivator was between him and the company, no one else, and surprisingly, we had no other contracts in MGS 3110. No one else's malice was affected. Unless you're talking about the down payment required and average monthly installments once payback is commenced on high-risk investitures. That I could see going up for a few million years after this, but don't worry too much. As I understand, the Dulach Alakis Imochelech continuum has an expected lifespan of dozens of billions of years. Or am I mixing that up with the Klethen Debach? No, I'm pretty sure that's right. Okay, folks, we are going to take a break now while I load up the data on the next stories. But don't touch that dial, we'll be back before you know it. In the meantime, drop us a comment or a question. Any stories out there you want to hear about? Want to make sure your villainous voice is heard? You've come to the right place, as this is diabolic dialogue, not monologue. Though you should absolutely check out our seminar on the monologue coming up this next Horizon Tide. And in the meantime, remember, I'm listening. 